Well, if you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Chronicles chapter 4. And Chronicles is in the Old Testament. So if you go Genesis and turn right, you're going to find 1 Chronicles. And we're going to pull out a scripture here today. And we're going to talk about the road from pain to prosperity. And uh, we're going to start in First, first Chronicles chapter, chapter 4. Now you've got sermon notes that you can follow along and we're only going to be a few minutes, so get your notes out and um, we're going to talk about... Many of you know that we are in a year-long series on the word blessed. And um, remember, the first word that mankind ever heard was you are blessed. I love that. The first words that God spoke to mankind was, I believe in you. You've got a destiny. You've got a purpose. I'm your biggest cheerleader. God spoke blessing over Adam and Eve. I'm glad that God didn't say to Adam and Eve, you're not good enough. You don't measure up. Hey, you're behind a little bit. Would you pick it up? No, God's first word to mankind is, you are blessed. And we need to continue to hear God, the Spirit of God say that we're blessed. I think it's ironic that the first words out of the mouth of Jesus when he started his ministry was Matthew chapter 5, and the first word that Jesus spoke in the greatest sermon ever preached was blessed. So Jesus was communicating the heart of God the Father. God said it in Genesis, Jesus says it in Matthew chapter 5, and the Holy Spirit is still saying that today. Church, you are blessed. Remember, we talked about blessing is not financial only, it's not physical only, that blessing is having God's hand on, upon your life to make a difference in this world. That's why you're blessed. How many of you are here today and you believe that God wants you to live a life that is blessed? Let me see your hand. All right. So we're going to unpack that a little bit more. Now, we started this in January, and we, I thought I was going to go through Psalms, but we haven't even got to Psalms yet. We've taken a 6 months uh, Holy Spirit detour, but we're going to get there eventually. But we're going to go uh, for the next few weeks and talk about pain and how pain is a part of blessing. You can't live a blessed life if you don't properly deal with pain. Now, how many know life is painful? Life is hard. Life sucks. Life is mean. And I put a couple scriptures in your notes that talk about, Jesus even predicted it. He says, in this life, you're going to have trouble. In this life, you're going to have pain. You can't run from it. You can't hide from it. It's just a part of life. But in the midst of our pain, we need to see that, that pain is a part of blessing. You can't separate the two. So if you're here today and you want to live a blessed life, you have got to deal with and, 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 and you've got to accept pain as a part of life and deal with pain with honor because it's a part of blessing. Now, I think the Christian church has, has erred on the side of, well, God wants you to be blessed, and, and there's no pain, and when you come to Christ, there's no sorrow, there's no hardship, and that's not the full gospel. The full gospel is that God wants you to be blessed, and in the midst of trouble, in the midst of pain, in the midst of hardship, you can deal with it honorably and still be blessed. I've heard people, Christians... Look at people that are going through hardships and say, oh, they're, you know, they're cursed. Oh, they they're, must not be living for God. And that's, that, that's not a true perspective on real blessing. So if we want to live a life that is blessed, we've got to learn how to deal properly with pain. Can I get an amen? So I'm taking you to 1 Chronicles chapter 4 because this is a crazy, crazy book. If you ever want to fall asleep, Go to 1 Chronicles chapter 1 and start reading. And it is name after name after name after name after name. And it goes on for 12 long chapters. In fact, 
There's over 2,000 names. And you're supposed to read that and get blessed. I mean, I, I can't read that. It doesn't bless me, but it's in there for some reason. But in the middle, watch this, of 2,000 names, God drops a nugget. And it's called the prayer of Jabez. And you're going to see in just a moment that this has a lot to do with blessing and a lot to do with pain. You remember the prayer of Jabez. Bruce Wilkerson, uh, in the early 2000s, I believe, wrote this book and it sold like 25 million copies. And it was based on this scripture. The prayer of Jabez. I mean, you remember it. Everybody was reading the prayer of Jabez. There was prayer of Jabez's Bez Bibles. There was prayer uh, of Jabez's pens. There was prayer of Jabez's t-shirts. There was prayer of, uh, prayer of Jabez's uh, bumper stickers. I mean, the only thing I didn't see was prayer of Jabez's underwear. But I mean, there was, they merchandised this thing to the, how many remember back the prayer of Jabez? And you probably still have that bumper sticker and that t-shirt, the prayer of Jabez. Great book, great story. But I want to kind of revisit this story because I think the book missed a very important part. Because it talks about pain and how Jabez dealt with pain. So in the middle of this crazy book with all these names, in chapter 4, out of nowhere, look what God says about Jabez and about pain and about living the blessed life. Look what it says in verse four, uh, chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. If you're with me, say amen. amen. And Jabez was more honorable. Circle that word honorable. Than all his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. And Jabez cried out to the Lord, God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. Wow, what a great little nugget. And then it goes right back into starting to name these people again. I mean, look at it. I mean, it's crazy names, names I can't even pronounce. Hundreds after hundreds after hundreds of names, yet right in the middle of this, God says, I'm going to give you a nugget. And by the way, church, God's word is filled with beautiful nuggets. In the middle of a bunch of boring names, God says, Pine Castle, I'm going to give you a truth. I'm going to give you a scripture. I'm going to give you some insight on how you can live the blessed life. And he does it here in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, 9 and 10. Now watch this. Jabez, his name means pain. And he was named pain because his mother gave birth to him in pain. We should all be named Jabez. Because ladies, you would agree with me that when you went through labor, it was what? Painful. But for whatever reason, God drops this story in the Bible, and in the middle of pain, Jabez's mom says, I'm going to name him Pain. So watch this. Every time she said his name Jabez, she was reminded of her pain, and he was reminded that his name meant pain. Crazy name, Jabez. His name means pain. The Bible says that Jabez was more honorable than all his brothers. And that's what I want to talk to you today about just for the next few moments. You see, I don't think we deal with pain real well. I don't think it's said of me that I deal with pain with honor. I think all of us have got pain and we complain a lot about our pain, and we don't deal with it honorably. The first sentence about Jabez was this, that in the midst of his pain, he was honorable. I love that. I'm, I've been dealing with uh, some pain the past couple weeks. I was, uh, I was kneeling down in my backyard working on my brick pavers, and I knelt down and I tweaked it. I would love to come to you today and say that I was kneeling down in prayer and I tweaked my knee, but I wasn't. I was working in the yard, and I tweaked my knee, and I have been in pain for the past two weeks. Every time I walk, every time I move, I'm in pain. And, and I like telling people about my pain. I like complaining about my pain. And so if you talk to me for, for a few minutes, I'll tell you right in the middle of our conversation, I was like, man, my knee's bothering me. 
It seems like the older I get, this 55 is just comes with a lot of aches and pains and, and, and hardships. And it seems like when we're in pain, we like telling other people about pain. I was just in the lobby, first service, and, and uh, Brenda and David Tooker uh, were here. They, they, they moved to Nebraska. And we were talking about fishing, and somehow David weaved in the fact that he has a rotator cuff injury. He's getting ready to go for surgery. I think in every conversation we have, we weave in the pain we're dealing with. And you may not have knee pain today. You may not have a rotator cuff problem. My friends Julie and Terry are here today, and just so happens he's got a rotator cuff problem, so I'm not picking on you. It was, really, it was David Tooker that was... That's good to have you guys, by the way. Uh, they were youth leaders of ours uh, in Oklahoma 30 years ago, and we've been friends ever since. So it's nice to have them. Um, you may not have knee problems or rotator cuff problems, but chances are you're here today and you're in pain. You'll see the definition of pain. Pain is an unpleasant distress occurring due to an injury. And life has a way of injuring people. And how you deal with pain will determine your destiny, your future. And what I love about Jabez, and it doesn't say this in the book of Jabez, the prayer of Jabez that sold 25 million copies, was that Jabez dealt with pain with honor. And I don't think we deal with pain with honor. I think we like to complain about it, and we like to moan, and we like to groan, and we kind of wonder, oh, God, why am I going through this? Why me? Pick someone else. And we just get all mopey and crazy when dealing with pain. Yet the Bible says that Jabez was more honorable. I want to be honorable when it comes to pain because pain is a part of life, and how you deal with it will determine your future and your destiny. So today, in these next few moments that we have, this is going to get personal. I want you to take your notes out and get your pen out, and I want you to write down today, what is your sore spot? What is the, what is the area in your life that you're hurting? Are you lonely? Are you depressed? Are you discouraged? Are you mad? Are you angry? Are you wondering, God, where are you? What is the, your sore spot? What is the area in your life that you are experiencing pain? And if this service is any indication of first service, there's a lot of people in pain. And I think God wants to show us today in these next few moments how to be honorable even in the midst of pain. I would be remiss if I told you that you can escape pain. I would be remiss today if I told you you could be a Christian and not have to deal with pain. I'd be lying. I'd be a heretic because pain is a part of life and how you deal with it will determine your future. And I want it said of me, I want it said of you that in the midst of pain, you and I were honorable like Jabez. So what's your pain spot today? If we were to go to Starbucks over a cup of coffee and I would look at you one-on-one -on -one and say, what's your pain spot today? I want you to identify it right now right now. I'd prefer you not looking at me. I'd prefer you looking down. I'd prefer you writing down a pain spot in your life today. Is it finances? Is it relationships? Is it a physical issue? Is it emotional pain that you're going through? What's your pain spot? Write it down. And in just a few moments, we're going we're gonna to cry out to God and ask him to help us deal with this. Are you addicted? Are you frustrated? Are you angry? What's your pain spot? What has caused you injury as you walk through life? And are you dealing with it honorably? If you're like me, you don't deal with pain real well. And God's going to show us and help us today to properly deal with pain. If you're still with me, say amen. I know it's a little awkward. I like it. It's called healthy tension. Take a minute out. Some of you crying right now as I'm talking. Some of you are dealing with the, 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 the struggle of even writing down that you have pain because you were taught that you shouldn't have troubles. You were taught that you just need to suck it up and be strong and just keep fighting through and you're not to acknowledge your pain. I think Jabez was honorable in dealing with his pain because he recognized it and he addressed it and he didn't run from it and try to avoid it. What's your sore spot today? What is it? And if you've identified it, which I hope you have, we're going to look at how, in ways that we can deal with it honorably, like Jabez. 
First thing Jabez did real quick, and we're only, we're only going to have one point today, so this is going to be real simple and short and sweet, and we're going to get you on with your day, was this. It says that Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. It says this in verse 10. And Jabez cried out to the Lord God of Israel. He cried out to the Lord God of Israel. See, when we're dealing with pain, we don't cry out anymore like they used to back in the 50s and 60s and 70s. We've been taught that we just need to internalize it and deal with it and suck it up and, and, and act like everything's fine. So here we are. Watch this. We come to church. We're all dressed up. Hopefully you shower today. You put mousse in your hair. You got a hairspray clone. You're, we're taught to really look good. We're not taught to cry out to the Lord. But the first step, watch this, in dealing with honorably with pain, and if you want to live the blessed life, you and I need to be like Jabez. And the first thing he did, the Bible says that Jabez cried out to the Lord his God. You know what we do? We get on Facebook, and we want to tell all of our friends the painful trial that we're going through. We want to get our buddies around, and we want to complain about the trial that we're faced with. And I love the fact that the Bible says that Jabez, in this obscure chapter, in the middle of 2,000 names, the Bible says that Jabez, whose name means pain, the first thing he did to be honorable was he cried out to the Lord his God. And I want to ask you a question. When was the last time you cried out? to the Lord your God. Because if you're going to deal with pain honorably, if you're going to be like Jabez and live the blessed life, you are going to have pain. And one of the secrets is that Jabez learned was that he cried out to the Lord his God. And guess what? As Methodists, we're not good at crying out. Because we're like sophisticated, cool, educated, we're not like those crazy charismatics that get crazy with God. We're, 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 we're Methodist. And Methodists have learned to contain and deal with internally and not cry out. I went just a few weeks ago uh, on our way to Africa. I, I stopped by London for a day and we went to John Wesley's uh, birthplace. It was really cool for me to go see that. John Wesley was crazy. And he was passionate. And John Wesley cried out for the poor and the needy and the sinners. We were talking about this over dinner uh, with Terry and Julie, that I, and Terry brought this up. Uh, uh, when John Wesley was at his height in England, 70% of the, of the people in England were alcoholics. And John Wesley was a fanatical, crazy preacher who would preach to people. And guess what? He would cry out on, the, on behalf of the poor and the needy and those that were addicted to alcohol and drugs. He cried out. See, I think if John Wesley would come back today, he would, he would, he would sit in our pews and he'd go, what has happened to you people? You guys are too sophisticated. You're too educated. You're not, you're not crying out anymore. And I think... I think Jabez would agree that the way that you and I honorably deal with pain is to cry out to God. God, I'm hurting. God, I'm mad. God, I'm angry. God, I'm hopeless. God, I'm lonely. God, I'm sick. And I'm not going to go run to Facebook or Instagram or Twitter to try to relieve this pain. God, I realize that I've got to deal with this pain, and I want to be honorable. And the only way I know how to deal with this is to cry out to you. And the reason we're late today is because this altar was filled with people and I was delighted to see it. Crying out to God. It was so cool. The tension was so strong. It was amazing. People were at the altar and a lady sit right over here. No one told her to do it. She just started crying out. God help me! I loved it. Because people are like freaking out. They're like, 
Hey, I thought this was the Methodist church. She was just crying out. The ushers didn't tell her to shut up. The greeters didn't run over there to try to calm her down. She was crying out, God, help me. You know what I liked about that? She was honorably dealing with her pain because she cried out to God. And there's some of you here today, you're trying to deal with it. You're trying to uh, internalize it. You're trying to fight through it and be strong. And I would tell you that if you want to deal with pain like Jabez did, be honorable and learn to cry out to God. It's one thing to tell your wife. It's one thing to tell your husband. It's one thing to tell your counselor. It's another thing to cry out to God. And I can't think of a better place to cry out to God than in church at an altar. Kneeling down, hanging on to this bar. I don't know what this bar is for, but I think this bar is to kind of hang on and just cry it out. Cry out to God. God, I'm in pain. And you don't look like you're in pain today, but there's a lot of you in pain today. And I'm telling you, if you want to be like Jabez and live the blessed life, you better deal with pain and deal with it honorably by crying out to the Lord your God. That's the way you deal with pain. And you're either in pain today, or you're getting ready to walk in pain, or you're coming out of pain, but pain is a part of life. And we've got to be honorable in dealing with pain. Let's go real quick to 1 Peter, and then we're going to close. Our sophisticated Christianity tells me I've got five minutes, so we've got to go quickly here. Go to 1 Peter chapter 4. How many are still with me? Say amen. amen. Or oh me. Or help them, Lord. Or say, say something, church. 1 Peter chapter 4. Go there real quick. This is not in your notes. I got this last night, and, and I want to give it to you. 1 Peter chapter 4. How many here today you've ever dealt with pain? Let me see your hand. All right, got the right crowd. I thought maybe this was the, this was the, the group that never deals with pain or sorrow or hardship or troubles. Look at verse 12. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Dear friends, you know what? Whenever he says that, he's setting you up. I'm telling you, whenever you read dear friends or saints, I mean, he's getting ready just to hit you right between the eyes. So he's, he's buttering you up. Dear friends, it's almost like he's saying, oh, oh, guys, come on. Dear friends, don't you? So watch this. Dear friends, don't be surprised. Everyone say surprised. Don't be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering as though something strange were happening to you. I get this all the time. Pastor Scott, you can't believe what's going on with me, man. Why? We're all programmed to think that. When we go through trials and troubles and pain, we're surprised. We're like, hey, where'd this come from? I didn't sign up for this. Hey, we're, we're talking about living the blessed life. I mean, where'd this come from? And we're all like that. Why do you think that it's strange, he says? that you're suffering as though something strange were happening to you. Verse 13, but rejoice. Everyone say rejoice. Rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. Watch this real quick. God's glory is revealed in you and me when we rejoice when we're suffering. And we don't complain we don't moan, we don't groan, but God's glory is revealed in us when you honorably deal with pain. Look what it says. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are what? What's that word? Come on, church, say it. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. If you suffer, it should not be, not be as a murderer or a thief or any other kind of criminal or even a meddler. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear his name. Look at verse 19. So then, those of you who suffer according to God's will, you should commit yourselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. Okay, write these six things down real quick. We're going to close. Number one, in dealing with pain honorably, number one, don't be surprised. Don't be shocked. 
Don't be thinking like, oh, I'm the only one who's going through this. No, we've all go, gone through pain. And the writer here in 1 Peter says, don't be surprised. Say those three words with me. Don't be surprised. Say it one more time. Don't be surprised. This week, pain's going to come into your life. And this is how I want you to respond. I'm not surprised. God, I want to be like Jabez. I want to deal honorably with this pain. And so, Lord, I'm not surprised. So, number one, don't be surprised. Number two, rejoice. Rejoice. And that's tough. Because I want to complain. I want to moan. I want to groan. I want to tell everybody my hardships. And the Bible says the reverse of that. Rejoice. Lord, I thank you. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. God, help me. My flesh wants to cry out in pain. But, Lord, I'm going to cry out and I'm going to rejoice. Lord, thank you. Forgive me this pain. Help me to be honorable in dealing with it. Number three, when you're dealing with pain, remind yourself that you're blessed. This is the blessed life. All of you signed up for this. To live the blessed life, remind yourself, I am blessed. I've always said that if you want to be reminded how blessed you are, Find someone else who's in worse shape than you are, and you'll be better. You want to go to Zambia with me next year? I'll show you hardship and struggle and pain and sorrow. You are blessed. We are blessed. And we need to remind ourselves that part of blessing is dealing with pain. Number four, real quickly, don't be ashamed. Some of you have been taught by religion that you're not supposed to have hardship. You're not supposed to have trouble. You're, supposed to, you're not supposed to get sick. You're not supposed to go through depression. You're not supposed to, don't be ashamed. Christ went through suffering, and you and I don't need to be ashamed when we suffer. Don't be ashamed. Number four, number five, I'm sorry. Use this time, the Bible says in verse 16, to praise God. Worship Him. Look at verse 16 in your, in your Bible there. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear his name. And then number six, when you're feel, dealing with pain and sorrow, charge on. Continue to do good. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Look what the writer says. So then, the view, those of you that suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. Sixth thing you and I need to do when we face with pain is to continue to do good. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. Don't stop. Do good. And keep pressing on. Charge on. Now, this is what we're going to do. It's 12.01. It'd be real easy for me right now just to say kind of like a feel-good prayer and let you get on with your day and let you move on with life. But there's some of you right now that your pain level is at a 10. Some of you, pain level 1 or 2. Some of you right now, you're in like crisis mode. And, 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 and let, me, let me tell you what happened first service. I'm talking about pain. There was a man over here to my left who's, he just put his wife into a nursing home. Been married for 60 years. He was kneeling right here. You know what he was doing? He was crying out to God. There's not a counselor in this world that can help somebody with that kind of pain. Been married 63 years, and for the first few weeks and months of his life, he's living alone. That's pain level 10, and that's when you need to cry out to God. There was a woman over here to my right, your left, right here, right here. She just lost two adult daughters, passed away. She's only got one kid left. Now, I'm standing up there in the front, and I'm looking at this, and I'm going, oh, I don't even like have the words. I don't even have the experience. I don't even have the wisdom. I don't even know. What do you say? But I'm so grateful that we took a few minutes out of our service and I gave people the chance to cry out to God. And the place was flooded with people crying out. That lady over there crying out, God help me! 
I loved it. Why? Because she was at a level 10, and she was being like Jabez. God, I want to be honorable. I'm not going to go to Facebook and tell everybody what I'm going through. I'm going to cry out to you, God, help me. And she cried out, and I loved it. So the easiest thing for me to do today would be to let you go, and let's move on with what we got going on for today. The hardest thing is to have healthy tension and give you the chance today to, 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 to shed some of your sophistication and to cry out to God. And so I'm going to give you the chance to do that. Whatever's going on in your heart and life, it's going to be awkward. There's going to be tension. I can feel it right now. I can feel some of you just tightening up right now. We didn't sing a song. We didn't make it real user-friendly for you to get in touch with your book. No, no. We just said, come down if you need to cry out to God. And people just out of nowhere just started coming out and crying out to God. You want to be honorable and dealing with pain? Cry out to God. He hears you. He cares about what's going on. And watch this. He's waiting for you to cry out. So you're trying to tough it out. You're trying to be strong. And God's up there going, when are they just going to cry out? It seems like in the 60s and 70s, we cried out to God all the time. It was normal, but we've become really, really uh, sophisticated in our religion. We don't cry out anymore because people are going to think we're crazy. People are going to think we're nuts. People are going to think we're, 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 we're fanatic. And I think we need to get a little bit fanatic sometimes when our pain is so strong that we've got nowhere else to turn to but God. Jabez cried out to the Lord his God. Now, I'm not going to have Aaron play a cute little guitar number right now. I'm not going to sing. I'm going to give you the chance in an awkward moment to acknowledge that you're in pain and there's only one place for you to go to, and that's to cry out to God. And I'm going to ask you to do that right now in front of everybody. Come down here to the front and cry out to God. <laughs>